Jesus greetings and welcome once more children of God to our topic living faith thank God for his word that is alive deep within our hearts in our soul and in our minds the word of God is powerful that it cleanses us on every level we've been studying from Mark 11 onwards and in this session we're going to just read these two verses that we left off uh, from the last session and Jesus speaking you know he said have faith in God for shortly I say to you whoever says to this mountain be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. He continues in the same breath. He says, whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, Forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. We know this is very much old covenant principles, but we will discuss this later on in another session, how this affects us so much more even in the new covenant. It's important for us to know what unforgiveness will do in our lives. You know, unforgiveness is not on its own. Unforgiveness is like a spearhead. It would lead us somewhere and bring us to destruction. Unforgiveness, firstly, you must understand, unforgiveness leads us to bitterness. All right, bitterness is not a good feeling Neither is it a good taste in one's mouth. You know, if somebody does have something that is bitter, if it is a medication, they will have it for its benefit's sake, not because of its taste. So when you have a bitterness against someone, which leads from unforgiveness, when you do not forgive someone they sins against you, that would lead you to become bitter. So in other words, to that point where you cannot stand that individual. You must understand this is the first building block. Unforgiveness is the first building block that you're putting down in, on the ground to build a wall between you and those things that you desire from God. All right? God still loves us, but He also wants us to be responsible children. He doesn't want us to be irresponsible. As I shared in the last session a bit, that some people have a big problem with forgiveness. You know, if, if someone has done harm to you, it is difficult at that point in time to just forgive the person. I do understand. I'm a realist. But I also believe that if you pray regarding that person or regarding that matter or regarding of how you feel in your heart, if you pray sincerely, you will receive healing. And that healing that you receive will take you further into a place of blessing, not a place of division, because that's where unforgiveness would lead you to. It leads you firstly to bitterness. And when you have bitterness against someone, it means like how you, have, you cannot stand the bitter taste uh, on your tongue and in your mouth, and you will not be able to stand that individual, even the sight of that individual, because you're now living in bitterness. All right? And then, you know, it doesn't stop there. Unforgiveness would not stop there. It leads you into bitterness, and then bitterness in turn leads you to strife. Now, strife is not a good thing. Strife. How do you define strife? Okay, let me give you my definition. Strife is a struggle in the atmosphere around you. That's what strife is. All right, to me, that's what I understand it to be. It's strife in the atmosphere all around me. All right, so that is where bitterness will, will take me to. It will take me to strife. 
and there will be so much of unrest around me. There will be so much of struggle around me and even in the atmosphere around my life. All right? So you must understand that atmosphere is a playground for, for, for tormenting demonic spirits. See where this would lead you? See what unforgiveness would do to us? All right? So that atmosphere, that negative atmosphere, that atmosphere of struggle, which comes from the spirit of strife, is a playground for tormenting demonic spirits. That is why some people, you know, the result of this is that people can't sleep at night. You know, if they do, it will be very little sleep. They actually struggle. And because of the lack of sleep, you know, they're all the time tired. They're all the time tired. And because of the tiredness their body is experiencing, they have a whole lot of chemical imbalances in their life. And one of the things that happens to a person that is always continuously tired because of the lack of sleep, they go to the area of anxiety. You know, they live a anxious, filled life daily. You know, they, you cannot, that atmosphere is such a negative atmosphere because that atmosphere produces a result that is killing people on the earth right now. All right, that kind of an uh, anxious uh, atmosphere, living in anxiety, that leads to stress. And you know, it has been noted already in the world that stress is the biggest killer of human beings on the planet. Why? Because stress opens the door for every kind of sickness that wants to grip a hold of you. And anyone will tell you this. I've spoken to some people that deals with herbal rem remedies, you know, a few years ago. And this is what the doctor told me, that every sickness that a person suffers with in their bodies starts in their stomach. All right. And you know what stress does? It attacks your stomach first. Your stomach linings is attacked first. That is where now that's the birthing place of all the other sicknesses that stress will be to you. Do you, love, do you want to live like that in unforgiveness? I know sometimes the pain is so much. And sometimes people do bad things. I mean, really, really, really bad things. Sometimes we are victims of people's, you know, harshness. And, and, and they would do, there would be nothing that they would not do against us. There are some kind of people around us that would do that. I mean, they hate us from within the core of their beings. And there's nothing they wouldn't do to harm us. We, I do understand that. I've been a victim of that many times myself. But you know what? In prayer, in the presence of the Lord, I receive healing. I will keep praying and keep praying and keep praying and keep talking to the Lord and opening up my heart to the Holy Spirit. And even the times when I don't, I, I don't feel that I can forgive the person, you know, I pray, I say, Lord, I want to drop this charge. Holy Spirit, help me. I want to drop this charge. I want to forgive this person, but I cannot because the pain is so severe. And I continued doing that. I remember this one time I went through such a difficult time with a group of people. You know, I'm not church people. Now I'm talking about family people. And they put me through hell. And I sat in the office and I just you know, spoke to the Lord and spoke to the Lord for hours and hours and hours. And, and I kept on saying to the Lord, it's not healthy to live like this. I, it's, 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 it's distracting me from my prayer life. Uh, this eventually is going to distract me from my study life. Uh, and I don't want this. You've got to have to help me. Uh, and the only way I believe you can do that is by healing me emotionally, healing my soul. And I cried out to the Lord that day. And I sat down in the office quietly. And you know what happened after a few minutes? I got up from that couch, raised my hands to the Lord, and I said, Lord, now I drop the charge against these people. How was that possible? Because suddenly healing came to my emotions. The Holy Spirit got me to reason with Him regarding that problem. And to, He showed me that was a, it was not a mountain. It was a little ant heap, which I am bigger than. But the enemy was taking that and making it seem like a mountain before me. 
And he's, and the, the Lord told me, already healing processes started in your heart. And then I got up from there, raised my hands to the Lord, and I named those people by name, and I say, I dropped the charge, I dropped the charge, I dropped the charge. I forgive that person, Lord. They, I don't know what's going on in their minds right now. And I do that, and do that, and did that that morning for, for quite a while, until I know that I was healed completely from all of that pain. It's important for you to know that, uh, you know, especially as Christians, as children of God, that's important for you. I have spoken to uh, to many, many, many Christians, you know, that come to me for counseling. And the first question is, my question to them, have you forgiven that individual? Uh, you know, some of them are very honest. They will tell you straight, immediately, up front, you know, I cannot. I cannot. I don't think I will ever forgive that person. You know, they'll tell you straight. I, I don't think I can ever forgive that person. No, I have not forgiven the person. But then I ask them a question. Have you prayed since that attack? Yes, I have prayed. Then what have you been praying? Well, you've been praying for your needs. And you've been praying out of your hurting heart. Okay? And I'm sure you mentioned that person in your prayer. And obviously that was not a good prayer. For that person, it came out of that bitterness that is in you. So you see what happens to us? We get ourselves all mixed up like a spaghetti bowl, you know, and we, we don't know where the beginning and where the end is. And, you know, as we continue like this, I want you to know, child of God, we are building a wall between us and our result of prayer. We are building a wall because we're seeking God for a breakthrough. And this wall is that hindrance for that breakthrough. Forgiveness will bring that wall crashing down. Forgiveness will bring healing to your heart. Forgiveness will get you to soar even into the heavenlies. And here in Psalm 55 verse 22, what a beautiful verse. And this is what it says. Cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. Are you listening? If you are a believer in Christ Jesus, for you are the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. The scripture says, cast your burden on the Lord. Cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He will strengthen you. He will sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. I'll tell you what, the devil will be moved. And the people the devil is using against you, those people will be moved. But you as the righteousness of God, in Jesus Christ, you shall not be moved when you have learned how to cast your burdens upon the Lord. It's important when you believe someone's words, that means you trust that person. And if you believe this word that I've just read to you right now, and if you believe those scriptures that you read in the Bible, if you believe that scriptures, that means you are trusting in God. That means God's word is alive inside of you. That means the word of the Lord is living in you. And you, and you believe the word of the Lord. And I believe the word of the Lord. And because we believe the word of the Lord, we trust in him. And here in, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5, this is what the scripture says. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourself to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And another, another translation says that God opposes the proud. He opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. How would you like God to be your opposition? I wouldn't want that. I would want to be on God's side. And I want to be, want God to be with me. I don't want to be resisted by God because of my pride. You know, pride is one of the things that will force us to not forgive somebody. But when we walk in humility and pray, God will heal our soul and we will forgive. And the next verse says, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Did you get that? Humble yourself, yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. The heart of humility is forgiveness. Doesn't matter how many times these people offend you. You have to still learn. You know, some people offended me so many times in this life. I actually have no problem forgiving them now because it, be, it, is, it has become a pattern. In fact, the things they do to me, it doesn't hurt me anymore. 
because it's just become such a routine, you know, in the heart of that individual. I don't know when they're going to stop. That is really up to them. But you know what? I don't, I don't even get bothered with that anymore. So if you walk in humility, therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. The next verse says, Casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. Do you believe that word? Do you believe, do you believe that God cares for you? And then go ahead with that scripture and, 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 and do what that scripture says. Humble yourself, yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Humility is the key. All right? That's where forgiveness comes from. I tell you what, getting your prayers answered is more important than, than keeping a grudge in your heart against someone. Having the spirit of unforgiveness in your heart cannot compare with the need for you to get your prayers answered. Are you listening to me? Because I know this here for the fact that if you, if you do not walk in forgiveness, your prayer life, which is the most powerful part of your life, you know, you move mountains in your prayer. You know, you get, you get, you get impossible things becoming possible through your prayer. You know, you ask and you receive. And the Lord, our God, our Father, is so generous towards us. You want to lose all of that just because you're struggling to forgive somebody or someone has hurt you so badly and you're just finding it difficult to forgive them? Would you, would you, want, to, you want to create a blockage between you and your answered prayer? Unforgiveness is the biggest hindrance anyone can have. Sometimes I know, I know there are some people who have already built this wall of resistance between them and the results of their prayer. And they are praying and praying and praying and praying and not getting any results. You know why? That wall is still up. Somebody did something to them five years ago. They still have the grudge inside of them. You know, forgiving somebody for their sins doesn't, doesn't mean that you must go make them your pals now. Doesn't mean to say that you must go, you know, around them and be with them regularly like you used to. Doesn't, that is not forgiveness. That is not forgiveness. All right? If that person has not changed in their heart concerning you, they're going to attack you again. So the best thing is for you to forgive that individual and the best thing is to stay away. Okay? Stay away, if, especially if a person has repeated what they've done for a second time. The Bible says, warn a person the first time, a divisive person the first time, warn him again a second time, and third time have nothing to do with him. That is scriptural. So if you know somebody has a poor pattern of repeatedly doing these things to you or against you, the scripture gives you permission to stay away from that person. To, when, if you forgive that person, doesn't mean to say right now you, you, know, you just open your whole heart and your whole soul to this person for them to come back and attack you again. That is not what I am teaching. I am teaching you to have the strength of God, all right, and walk in humility. If someone has harmed you, pray the Holy Spirit give you strength, and then you forgive that person and walk in forgiveness so that you will get all of your prayers answered. You, by doing that, you know, by doing that, people will wonder how you are getting these breakthroughs, you know. People wonder, especially people like myself, that's always under constant attack. But I am, I flourish in my life and people want to know how I'm still healthy in my life and in my body. A person like me should have been dead by now. Now, how is that possible? I'll tell you how that is possible by the healing virtues of the Holy Spirit, healing my soul time and time again, healing my soul time and time again. And then I stand up strong and I raise my hands to the Lord. I drop every charge and I walk clean. I just walk clean before God and I know there is no resistance. There is no wall that is built up between me and my prayers that I want answered, my breakthroughs, my miracles. So I want to encourage you today. Forgiveness is the key. In fact, humility is the key. Humility will get you to forgive someone irrespective of what they have done. How serious that matter is. You might say, well, this is unforgivable. No, it is forgivable. When the Holy Spirit heals your soul, you can forgive. Give Him a chance to come into your emotions and let Him heal your emotions so that you can have rest 
you can have peace and you can walk in forgiveness and when you pray the heavens open for you the angels are at your beck and call and whatsoever you believe for in prayer believe that you receive it and you shall have it in jesus holy name and now lord my father i pray for our precious people even today father god your precious children sweet holy spirit i cover every person every listener lord that is listening to the to my voice or listening to this message i release your blessings upon them i release healing into their souls and into their bodies today and i pray that you bless them oh god exceedingly abundantly above all they ask or imagine oh god but according to the power of your love according to the power of your word that is at work in their lives today so i thank you for them dear lord may you bless them in jesus name by faith i apply the blood of the lord jesus christ upon every listener today in jesus holy name may the lord bless you richly child of god stand strong stand firm immovable always abounding in the work of the lord and continue praying and continue forgiving in jesus holy name Amen.